On today's show, we are going to be going into the Flash Forge Creator Max and upgrading our hot ends. Stick around. Hey, welcome back to the First Layer. My name's Richard. I'm your host here every Saturday morning and live stream Sunday afternoon when we do our show, Ask for Help. On Ask for Help, you can join live and get your questions answered about 3D printing. So we do that every Sunday from 12 p.m. Mountain Standard Time to 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Be sure to join us, would you? Now, today we are going to do an upgrade of sorts on our Flash Forge Creator Max. Now, you're going to ask me, why would you want to do an upgrade? You're the guy who says, don't do upgrades. Well, sometimes they're warranted. And today we're going to take what they call an all-metal hot end, and we're going to upgrade it with some parts from uh, Micro Swiss to bring it to an, a real all-metal hot end. Let's head it over, and I'll show you what I mean. So in order to get this job started, what we're going to need is an adjustable wrench or adjustable pliers. We're going to need a pair of uh, cutters, some needle nose pliers, a 9 millimeter wrench. We're going to need a 0.2 and a, or a 2 0.0 and a 2.5 millimeter hex wrench. We're going to need a sharpie or something to write with. We're going to need a round file. We're going to need some arctic silver or other type of thermal paste. We're going to need some tape and we're going to need the parts that we're going to use to replace the components in the hot end. So we've removed all of our filament. Now we want to make sure that the machine is off and unplugged. We're going to take our pliers and our 9 millimeter wrench and we are going to go in and start to dismantle. So we just want to grab the block, grab that grab that nozzle and loosen it up Go. Take the old brass nozzle out and we're going to remove the Bowden tubing as well. Put that off to the side and we'll go ahead and get started on the secondary one. We've got that piece of Bowden tube sticking out there, so we're just going to take our needle nose pliers and just grab it and pull it out. We're not going to need the, these pieces anymore. Alright, so we have the whole assembly disassembled now, and what we want to do is we want to make sure that we know which is which. So this is our left and this is our right, and we're going to use some masking tape. And we are just going to make that abundantly clear which is which. So we're just going to go left, or right, and left over here. And we'll take our Sharpie, and we'll just mark L and an R. So you should be able to see that, L and R, there we go. Now let's go ahead and uh, loosen up those set screws on the back so that we can pull these out and get to making some changes. So first and foremost, if we look at the back here, we can see that we have two little set screws holding these tubes in. So we're going to have to go in and take out those set screws 
or loosen them up. Hopefully we can get them loosened up. There we go. That one's loosened up. And this one is loosened up as well. There we go. So we're just going to back both of these off. All right, so now we're going to turn it back around because we know which is our left and which is our right. So we're going to take the left one out first. Trying not to damage anything on the way out. So we don't want to damage any of this wiring that's going on. have to loosen these right off. There we go. I just want to put them where we're not going to lose them. left one out and I'm just going to mark the left one on the cover here with an L so I know that that one is left and I'm going to do the same thing on this one I'm just going to put an R there we go so I know which one goes where And that's a pretty tight fit, so we're going to have to try and get that out of there. Why that is so tight is beyond me. Let's see if we can just kind of angle that out of there without busting anything. This is always the difficult part when you get into this sort of turmoil. Things don't want to come out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew this from the block itself. And I don't care too much if I damage this tube at this point. Because we're not going to reuse it anyway. So I'm just trying to get my pliers around it. so that I can pull it out. It's a difficult one for sure. The one thing that we don't want to do, of course, is break anything. Um, but Getting this tube out might be a bit of a problem on this aluminum block. So I'll get that out and we will come back as soon as I've got it out. So what we're going to do now is put the nozzle into our uh, block here. And we want to make sure that we have the block set up correctly. So that's our left and that is our right block left and our right so that's the way they should seat so let's take our nozzle and we're going to just put our nozzle in and tighten it down bottom it out once we've got it bottomed out we're going to take it a quarter turn back and that's about it so you just want to have a little bit of space not a lot between the nozzle and the block itself once we've done that then we can move on to the next item on our agenda. First and foremost let's get the other nozzle in. And now we're going to add the thermal tube which is that guy and we can see that it's tapered on the end. Now this is an all-metal tube unlike the one that we previously took out 
which as you can see from the bottom holds that Teflon tube. That's where we run into trouble. So let's uh, screw this in until it bottoms out and that's where we're going to leave it. We're going to do the same for the other one. All right. So before we go any further, we're going to take a little bit of our Arctic paste or Arctic silver. In this case, it's called Pro Protronics. And we're just going to open this up and put a little bit of material onto our heat breaks. Okay, so we're going to take a little bit of this Protronics thermal paste and we're going to put it onto our tubes as best we can. Spread it around there a little bit. Alright, we'll put the first one in place. And we'll just bring that till it just crowns above the top of the heat block. And then we'll do the same for the other one. A little bit of arctic paste on it. Now this stuff can be messy, so do it with caution. Try not to get it on your skin if you can avoid it. If you do, just go wash it off. And now we are going to put this one in place. Again, we're just going to crown it a little bit above the top. We're going to eyeball these so they look like they're about even. And now we're going to put our set screws back into the back and set these in place. So let's get on to that. Line these up so they're straight. And there we go. Just give that a little tighten down. And we'll get the other one in. And then we will uh, start to reassemble this. So now all there's left to do is reassemble it back into the machine. What we want to do first is we want to heat up our nozzles. We want to preheat them. Okay, so now that we've brought these to temperature, we're going to do our final step before we can start running any material through it. And this is a critical step and something that people miss all the time. What we need to do now is tighten this up on our heat block. So I'm just going to grab my heat block again. And I'm just going to now get my spanner on there and tighten that up. find out which way it should go first. Alright, so let's get our spanner on there. And we're just going to tighten it up. We're not going to get Hercules on it, we're just going to tighten it up. Now be very aware that this wrench now is hot. There we go. That is now fully tight. We are ready to put some filament through it. Let's try it out. So let's have a look at the anatomy of the old heat brake and nozzle. Here we have a uh, brass nozzle with a throat which is all metal with the exception of the Teflon tube inside. Now, the reason that we have upgraded is because this Teflon tube tends to become like this and then clogged with material. 
as you can see there. It comes clogged with material and then you have under extrusion and you have all kinds of other issues and it just is not a good fit. But one of the things that you want to make sure of, let me just put this back together, is why we tighten after we've heated is so that the seal between these two parts is nice and tight because we don't want any material leaking out through there and if there is a space as I'll demonstrate here this is kind of extreme but if there's any kind of space in there we are going to get leakage of material and that can cause several problems so we want to make sure that that is totally sealed against the heat break okay so if we don't do that we know that we're going to end up, end up with problems and the reason that we went to this one is because this particular kit which is right here let me just take out everything this micro swiss kit which has all the parts that we need, MK10 all metal hot end upgrade kit uh, will work on the Creator Max, Creator Max 2 uh, also on the Creator Pro and the uh, Creator itself, the regular Creator so this is going to work on all of these Micro Swiss has a great detailed guide on how to do this and I recommend that you go and check out their page. I'm going to put a link down in the description. But this is the kit you're looking for if you want to upgrade to an all metal hot end. While this is still all metal, it lacks because of that inner tube. So once we start getting into our higher temperatures to print our ABS and other materials, what we're going to see happen is we're going to see clogging which we see in this tube here, okay? Well, as you can see, it's not very hard to do an upgrade on any printer. If you're going from a stock nozzle and heat break setup, usually what you're gonna find is that they're not all metal. Even though they say they're all metal, they're not all metal. And we've proved that today by seeing that Teflon liner inside the throat. Now, as I explained, what can happen with that Teflon liner is it can get jammed up with sticky residue from material especially when you're trying to pull it out um, so be very careful when you're trying to do that the upgrade that we've made works great we printed some parts right here um, this is for a friend of mine and uh, he's got a, a nice little business I'm not going to tell you too much about these parts but they came off the printer done very well in ABS and uh, I even think the quality is a little better than what we had in previous um, things that I've printed on that printer. So having that all metal hot end really helps an awful lot. So it's not that hard. Try it yourself. Check your hot end. Doesn't matter if you're on a Creality, a Flash Forge, um, you know, a Lot Max, uh, an ANET, it doesn't matter. You can do upgrades to all of these types of printers. The only printer that I know of that is truly an all metal hot end is the Prusa Mark 3S or the Prusa Mark 3, Mark 2, uh, and some of the other previous generations because the E3D hot end is an all metal hot end from the top of the heat sink right down to the nozzle at the bottom. So go ahead, check those out for yourself today. I've got links to everything that we were talking about today down in the description. Make sure you check those out and uh, we will see you guys next time right here on the first layer. Don't forget, if you're new here and you got something out of today's episode, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like, and leave a comment down below. We'd really love to read your comments. And uh, remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print. We'll see you on Saturday.